It says silence is golden. Silence is golden. Now, I'm sure everybody's heard that. But maybe I'm Mr. Curiosity. And I wondered who it was that said that. Did a little bit of research and there are different points of view on who said it. But uh, the one I, I stick to is perhaps the closest one. Um, a German, it's a German proverb. And um, my research didn't reveal who it was. It doesn't matter anyway. But whoever it was who said, silence is golden. Obviously, he lived in a different time. Always putting somebody, he was always putting somebody on and it misunderstood and things, things get repeated down the ages and it sounds so good, you know, silence is golden, especially when it's convenient. When you don't want to expose yourself as to where you stand, you say silence is golden. When you, want, you don't want to convict yourself, you say silence is golden. But you go stand in a court and you're asked a question and you try living, uh, living it out, silence is golden, you're going to go to jail, that's for sure. But I was thinking, you know, silence is golden. But why did the guy say that? If silence is golden, why didn't he just shut up and think to himself, silence is golden? Silence is not golden. Silence is a sign of not knowing hell. Silence is a sign you're chicken. Just silence is a sign you dare not come out for fear somebody take you on. That's why I talk straight. And I make no excuses. People say, that guy talks so much. That guy likes to talk so much. That's a favorite solution thing. Madame, I like to talk so much. Of course I like to talk. And I hope I talk sense. And that little bit of flesh in my mouth, it was given to me by whoever the creator was. So I should not be silent. So that whole thing sounds contradictory. That's my little lesson for the day. The second one is, I wonder if you've ever heard of the Heisenberg Principle. And by other names, it's known as the observation uh, principle. And it's, it's something to do with um, physics. And I'm not getting into anything on physics. I know nothing about physics. Okay? But basically, what it means is there are things that, as you watch them, the mere study of them causes them to change so that you never really can describe those things. The mere process of studying them, the mere uh, process of measuring them, changes that you never show. There's a simple one, like, like you, 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 uh, you, you pump your tire up and you have a tire gauge. Every time you test that, that gauge, you lose some more air out of it. So again, you're never quite sure Every time you test the thing, do you have 40 pounds in this, etc., etc., etc. Observer, the observation effect. And all of that is an introduction to an article that I wrote last week. And it concerned the leader of the opposition party. And friends of his read my article. And they said to me, you got it wrong, although I did not get it wrong. And in any event, I named some people in the article. I named people who were there, though I didn't pinpoint who said what. So anyway, they said, you got this wrong. And, you know, I thought of the Heisenberg principle. And I thought of the tire gauge thing. And I wonder who was right. Were my sources right when they said they saw what they saw and heard what they heard? When the others who called me, were they right when they tried to tell me that I got it wrong, etc.? I don't know, but I thought it very, very funny that nobody sought to tell me what the right thing was. And the main part of the story was that the leader of the opposition party had finally found or done a deal for turf. Well, no sooner had that been established than a well-placed source again was telling me, you were right, but you were not quite wrong. In fact, it's not this constituency he's after, it's that constituency now. 
So it, over the weekend, apparently, the whole thing had changed because the constituency he sought to acquire would have cost him so much. So now constituencies have become things to barter. My God, St. Lucia, this is where we are and we remain silent about it. We keep on, we, we, we're moving now from electing guys who call each other crooks and criminals and whatnot in the house so that we end up with the impression that we have nothing but crooks in parliament. Now we're finding out that nobody has his soul into anything. It's just a matter of getting into the house by any means necessary. Think about that.